This is all honey here. Test, test one, test two, audio check. Okay, cool. Hey guys, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. I'm here on the garden island of the Hawaiian Islands called Kauai, and I'm in this incredible property here that's humongous. It's probably over 100 acres of land on the coast near the north part of Kauai, and I'm partnering up with my friend Oliver today, Aloha Honeybee, who you guys have seen on my channel before, given an epic tour of his family home garden but he's also a bee specialist and today he's doing a removal from this property here and he's letting me come along and uh, show some shots of how he removes bees what he does is he might charge somebody for the bee removal and he tries to safely save the colony and save the bees he brings them back to his house and the fee he collects pays for all the equipment that he uses and then if he gets any kind of honey, he tries to sustainably harvest from the bees, but if he gets any part of it, he gives it to his mulch guy, and then the mulch guy delivers wood chips at his farm. It's a total closed circle. So we're hooking up with Oliver today, we're gonna see what he does to remove these bees, and it's gonna be intense. If you guys have interest in raising bees or capturing a beehive, you might wanna watch this video, and then go check out Oliver's social media, uh, Aloha Honey Bee, and find out more about what he does, which is a lot. Let's go find him. What do you got here? Got the smoker. Let me get this thing going. Everything's pretty wet around here, so I gotta get going with some cardboard. Like a true beginner, like smoker, what does this do to them? Um, <laughs> so everybody has a different idea of what the smoker does to bees. <laughs> what the smoker actually does to bees is mimic a forest fire. And to oh. them, that means they need to engorge themselves with honey um, because they need to be ready to leave the tree that they're in and make new comb at a new place um, in a safe tree that's not burning wherever they came from. Um, so in a sense, it keeps them occupied um, eating honey and less interested in you and what you're doing. Um, but in removal processes, it can also be used to steer the bees. If they're going in a direction that you don't want them going, you can um, blow smoke in um, that area to push them back the other way to help steer them. How many of these removals would you say you've done before? Um, definitely over 150 in six years, I think. First year that I did it, I did 40 removals in one summer. Wow. And the next year, I think I did 30 removals the following summer. I have about 45 hives at the house. I've got I think about 10 or 15 hives over at my friend's farm in Moloa. Over at Mango Hustlers Farm. Hmm. Um, yeah, and had a few, had some bees at some other people's places too, but since I've taken those away from those areas, they were a little bit tricky to access. And I'm tagging along here. Do I need to like um, cultivate some sort of like spiritual state, or <laughs> are we gonna survive this encounter today, or what? You just gotta be one. You gotta be one with the bees. I've done this once before on my own, so I want to see how a pro does it because I didn't know what I was doing the first time. I've been doing bees for about six years now. Um, I learned on YouTube, is what I always tell people. Pretty really? Much. Yeah, everything uh, I learned about bees is pretty much through YouTube and a lot of other websites, like reading some stuff, but YouTube mostly. I want to thank uh, JP the Bee Man on YouTube for posting all his videos of his removals because that was super helpful to me to understand how the process worked. Um, so if you have time on YouTube, check out JP the Bee Man. He's got some epic, epic bee removals too. 
And then taking what you saw on YouTube and getting out there and just trying it. Yep, and taking what I learned from him and a bunch of other people and uh, applying the best to what I do over here in the tropics. You're going in with no suit. Yeah, I'll start with no suit, and if they start lighting me up, I'll put my jacket on. So some general B Ignorant questions. Is it true that if they sting you once, then they die? Yes. It is? Yes, especially, um, they actually can give you a little sting sometimes, like a warning sting, yep. without the sting stinger actually sticking into you. And so, in that sense, they can give you a little sting and not die, but if they give you a full blow sting and the stinger comes out of them, they're dead. And why, why is that? Why did that happen to them? Like, that's what kind question. of evolutionary <laughs> biological <laughs> That's a tough question. <laughs> Purpose is that. Um, I'll, I'll I cut know, that out. Full commitment to the team. It's like a it's a team commitment. I, I guess. You know, it's, uh, there's no room for selfishness in the beehive. And it's a beautiful example for humans. Yeah. They all work together um, without any question. Hmm. For the for the the betterment of the colony. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting too that like, I don't know, I, not, not to be macho, but I can take like a hundred stings. Like I've been stung a hundred times on a removal and I'm just a little barely swollen. And somebody who's anaphylactic allergic can die in three minutes. Right. Wow. Swell your throat up and shut you down in three minutes and die. So yeah. yeah, in one sense they're pretty minor and in another sense they're ultra dangerous. Jesus. Don't watch the stinger come out. Oh, oh the Jesus. What, is it? Can oh my it? God, yeah, totally. That's why they die. So the key to getting them out is to flick them back the same way they came. Oh yeah? Yeah, so that way you don't pinch the, all the venom sac right back into it. So oh, okay. If you have a blade or anything, you kind of, you know, right, back, yeah. back blade at it, you know, or something, or use your finger now the back blade at it. Mm. Don't like pinch it. Yeah, don't go try to pinch at it because then, because if you, you look, squeeze the venom. Yeah, if you look at it closely, there's actually a little sack there. I should have tried to show you that. And sometimes after that comes out, you can see it throbbing. Wow. It's actually still pumping. Wow. Pumping the venom in you. And if you go and squeeze that thing, you push all that venom right in. Well, that was disgusting. So thank you very much for that. Uh... <laughs> Sorry about the audio today, but I had to take the mic off the camera because the bees might go for the mic. So we got the internal mic going, we got some truck over here, but I'm definitely um, on the bees' radar because I'm getting hit in the face by a few of them and Oliver was talking about that's their natural defense to bears, right? Yeah, natural predators, the brown bear. So um, they've learned over millions of years that the best way to take on the bear is to attack the face and the eyes because the rest of their body is so furry, it's kind of unpenetrable. Mm -hmm. um, so when they come after humans, generally they go for your face. Whoa.
What'd you find up there? A lot of honey. Really? I might need to go on the roof and cut this from the roof. It might be better. Yeah, there's a solid amount of old nice honey right there. There we go. Whoa. So that one was kind of hard to get to. A little tricky. I have this double, double little ceiling thing here. Hmm. They know what they're doing for uh, protecting their investment there. <laughs> I'm getting bombed. They're hitting the mask like hardcore. <laughs> you're a contracting guy, so <laughs> normally you said you're doing jobs where you're preserving the structure. That's your specialty is. Yep not breaking anything. Exactly, today is a, uh, a freebie. This house is getting demolition. self-defense mode. I don't know if the camera can pick up how hard they're hitting the mask. They're like hitting the mask full on like someone's punching it. Pop, pop. Like kamikaze pilots. Oh my god, Jake, we gotta come back with more honey preparation. There's so much honey in here. Ah, hold it there one sec. Ah. Nice. Whoa. Do you realize how much honey is in there? No. This is all honey here. There's Whoa. A, all the dark stuff over there is the brood and all this is honey. Whoa. This is... There's probably over 100 pounds of comb in here, easy. Really? Honeycomb. You think this is only half? Yeah, I think there's more up there to come. Dude, it looks insane up there, man. It looks like, um, just like an alien this civilization. This here had this living in their house with them. Wait, what did? Whoever was living in here had this living with them. Really? Yeah, for sure. This thing is a couple years old. Wow. Holy smokes, they're getting fired up from where I sit here. Bring you out a photo in a sec. All right, there she is. I love your camera, dude. I not like it. biggest one I've had in a while. I've only had a couple this big. This has got so much honey. We're gonna have to get the vacuum and come back prepared for all this honey as well. Mm. We need more. I only want three five gallon buckets. That'll, that'll fill that up so quick. So the white comb up there is... Yeah, so if you see here, the different aged combs uh, show the age. That white comb is cosmetic grade beeswax. What they want for um, lip balms and face lotions and all that other stuff they do with it. And then you can see the yellow comb is um, a bit older. And then it, over there in the beginning, where the, most of these are, the dark comb is definitely a couple of years old. It's brown at this point. Alright, so you gotta tell me what this thing is here. <laughs> it's my bee vac. It's a uh, shop vac beehive conversion. So tell me, this uh, this vac, it's gonna kill them or not? 
open up. Just gonna put them into this hive right here, and then later we'll un reunite this uh, the bees with the rest of the hive. Nice. So you've got this set up so that they go directly in the box. Yep. Okay, so what are you gonna do now? You're gonna cut the comb down. Yeah, we're gonna start to cut the comb out and uh, start with the honey, and work our way into the brood, and um, transfer whatever um, brood or babies are uh, movable, and hunt down that queen in the process. Because the whole hive will follow the one queen. Yep, the whole hive follows the queen pheromones. Whoa. Let me see that thing. You already got it. Put that right there for one second. Yes. Whoa. It's dripping down your fingers. And we were talking about some like vegan people saying, no, that's the bee's honey, but this is uh, way over production, right? Yeah, this is surplus for sure. Um, it's a different story when you're in the tropics. Why they, is that? They can feed on things year round here. We don't have a winter like the mainland where you guys gotta be careful how much your bees are left with before winter starts. Dude. How thick that thing is right here. From here to here. It's so thick. Wow. That's an insane piece there. It's just dripping out of there. hour removal than a four hour removal for sure. Wow.
So you're still gonna eat this stuff or, or no? That is gonna be fed back to bees in the yard. I see, okay, cool. What are you thinking about right now? Just the logistics of... I'm kind of wanting to take this block of wood out so I can come cutting at an angle. Mm. Could be worth it, I think. Might be a little extra work, but... It'll be worth it. I'm gonna make such a mess trying to squeeze all that foam out to get started. Way better than the store. <laughs> Wait, hold that guy right there. That's crazy. Wow. Pretty amazing. <laughs> You're all excited. You went from thinking this was going to be just like a, not even a full hive to... Yeah, it was strange. When we opened up that first section, it looked like it could just be a dwindling little old hive in this rotten building. And then it was strange how this thing was constructed. It looks like there was this roof that was built on top of this roof as like a little porch. So it was actually hidden up in this little secondary section of, of uh, roofing. And you could tell that they were really passionately defending something. For sure. A lot of work they put into all this. You gotta flip that one around, it's so thick. Let's see the side profile, oh my gosh. This is not like a daily occurrence for you, this is not. No, um, it's getting late season now for swarm calls, but a lot of the times I get calls, um, they're just for swarms, for new hives. Um, the first couple years I was doing it, I got a lot of older hives like this, but it seemed after a couple of years of doing it, I cleared them all out, but this is a call that I just got the other day. Wow. Um, hadn't had one this size in a while. And I don't know if you want this on camera or not, but so they pay you and you get all this honey. Yep. It's Dude, a win-win. Win-win for you. Yeah, so I'll take this honey and bring it back to the family and to the community and trade for stuff and share and just psych everybody out. And, and you're a pretty compassionate vegan guy, so you give a lot back to the bees. Yeah, so we'll feed the hive that we're removing right now more than enough honey that they need to be fine. And then all this extra comb that's a little bit messy or hits the ground or anything, we'll take back out to the bee yard and just put it out on a nice day and let all the bees just free for all on it. So it'll all end up back in one of the hives either way. <laughs> just like, they don't get, especially when they're cutting out like this right now, they're like, be able to pull like these are perfect throwing a ziplock you give to someone right you know it's yeah like gorgeous oh my gosh one friend is the funniest story told me i was dying laughing in san diego him and his my other friend that i knew um they are in be uh sur wetsuits and stuff trying to tackle this this beehive out of um out of like a bird house or something and the, this the story of them doing it was just absolutely ridiculous <laughs> See if I can find Hank on the way out of here, the security guy. Come up. That'd be sweet. First, things are almost full, and I don't think we've made it halfway through. It's gonna be an issue. Do so you think your vacuum sucked the queen out, or she's still no, up there? I can I can tell that she's not over there because the bees aren't interested in the box. Um, she's probably somewhere up here still in the brood chamber. Um, we'll get to her once we get all this honey out of the way and we'll get out of the sticky zone. Start picking through the brood and find her. That is like freaking crazy. I think 
that someone's in here with me. That's an insane piece of honey right there. Maybe it's just a beer. Uh -huh. Whoa. And we've got five of these. And that's only half. 